Hey, Jason here, and this is my first video of 2022, and also my first video in a while, just due to the new semester starting, me being busy, and my room definitely evidencing that as like this segment right here with the table and the lights, this setup is like the one clean spot in my room right now. Uh, the rest has been kind of subject to a lot of use, you know, getting back into things, getting busy and taking care of classes and such. But so they've got something pretty interesting to talk about. This is the Umidigi Bison and uh, you probably heard the name Umidigi before if you've been a regular consumer of my content as Umidigi is the manufacturer of the best phone at $100. That's the best new in condition and age phone that I select every year um, at that price point. They've been the winner for three years in a row, not by any collaboration with the company. I've never even spoke to them before. I always pay for the phone myself, but this time they decided to hit me up. Uh, I think they'd seen my videos and appreciated my coverage of their stuff. They sent this out to me. This is the Bison X10. Um, I have already popped the top off uh, just to take a look at it. And just from that first impressions, I can say this is a pretty interesting looking phone. It's massive, it's thick, it's heavy, um, but it's supposed to have a really large battery in here, be a real like rugged, um, I wouldn't say travel, or I guess, I mean, I guess it could be like considered a travel thing, but really just general super durability and indestructibility. Um, so I guess we already got started with the unboxing. Let's just continue what we've already begun. Uh, this is the phone here. Let's pull that, that, uh, that did not work. Taking that front decorative cover off that said this is the p60 chip inside here um on par with the best phone at 100 dollars very large screen 6.53 inches uh 20 megapixel camera it is water very very water certified ip68 and ip69k and real weatherproof weather sealed uh stuff going on here two independent customizable buttons you know i wasn't a fan of the customizable bu customizable button uh, on the Umidigi A9 Pro, but we'll see how it goes with this guy and the stock Android 11. Um, let's go ahead and peel that second. Actually, is there anything interesting out here we want to see? Let's point out where the camera is. Different varieties of camera, volume button, fingerprint scanner is on the side. That's interesting. Anyway, let's peel that back off. Sweet. And honestly, you know, if, if, you asked me to rank in the world of massive, thick phones, camping phones, durable phones, phones for extremely clumsy people, which kind of applies to me. Um, I'd say they didn't do too bad of a job, honestly. It's obviously not a very minimal design. It's taken an entirely different approach than the A7, A9 Pro series. Um, but in the, you know, in the space that I'm definitely not very acquainted to of massive phones with big batteries and rugged designs, I don't know. I think it's a pretty good execution, albeit maybe the orange buttons on the sides. I'm just generally not a huge fan of orange on tech products. I don't know. But let's go ahead and get this guy powered on. Ooh, bison. Let's get that going and just kind of talk about real briefly what else we got in the box. Standard manual. Really everything down in here kind of looks like what you like what you'd expect with an Umidigi phone, same as the A5, A7, A9 Pros that I've had in the past, so. US charger, I guess this is different because I've typically bought the international models to save a little bit of cash. I guess they just sent me the US model because they know where I, where I live and what I would desire in my default charger. And then a USB-C cable. I'm not gonna copy apps and data from my main phone. Don't typically do that when setting up phones. Welcome. I agree. All right, let's try this fingerprint reader out. I don't know if I'm just bad at this, but it's struggling to get this set up. There we go. Finger moved too slow. Okay, so when you unlock the phone, you just put your finger on the fingerprint reader. Didn't work that time. Work that time. Um, you don't actually press the button to unlock the phone, and then to lock it back up after unlocking it, you press it. So, I don't know. It's working pretty good so far. Let's take a test selfie right now. Why not? And then back camera. Getting a lot of haze from that softbox, but I don't know. Let's take a picture of this.
not looking too bad. Um, actually might be better than the A9 Pro, just judging off of, you know, zooming in, looking around, evaluating sharpness and how much it processes these photos. I don't know. My main deal is like when I zoom in, it doesn't exhibit that characteristic like compression that the A9 had. I don't know. It'd be really weird if this outdoor rugged phone had a better camera than the sleek, polished A9 Pro. Uh, but I do feel like this is the part of the video where I transitioned from my first impressions with regards to the unboxing and the setup process uh, to talking about the Bison X. Back of the phone says Bison X, box said Bison X10. Um, I highly doubt there's been 10 revisions or versions of this phone, but you know, with the A series, they go by, by odd numbers, so maybe this goes by twos. I'm not sure, but let's talk about my more fleshed out thoughts after a couple weeks. First things first, the cheapest price I could find this phone at was $140, roughly $20 more than the Umidigi A9 Pro, which you can think of as the same phone internally without the extreme rugged design language of the Bison. For those new, the A9 Pro is a phone I've heavily covered recently that I think provides great all-round value for the $100 price range. But with the Bison's price in mind, let me cover the unique aspects of the Umidigi Bison X10 that are entirely unlike anything I've ever handled before. This phone has the highest IP rating obtainable, which basically means it's fully dust, submersion, and high pressure spray resistant, and that combined with its military certification means this phone physically will be really tough to break. It looks the part too, with a chunky form factor that includes protective rubber on the edges and decaled aluminum sides. This is also where the fingerprint reader is located, embedded into the power button. There's also an absolutely massive 6150 mAh battery in here that for perspective is 33% more capacity than the Pixel 6 and almost twice as much as the standard iPhone 13. Now, as those of us well versed with Android tech specs know, that does not translate to the same amounts of increased usage time, but regardless, this phone has very impressive battery life, especially in the budget Android world. Several days no charge is entirely possible. The screen begs a small disclaimer here, as it's not really on par with the phone's price category. The screen is 720p instead of what I think should be 1080, and it exhibits weird color distortions in low light scenarios. Seems to be some kind of auto color temperature feature just messing up. But after this point where we've covered the crazy design and battery, and I guess throwing in that this phone has NFC and ships with Android 10, we've reached a spot where everything else is standard for Umidigi's budget phones. Performance-wise, the phone is identical to my best phone at $100 pick from a couple months ago. Same Helio P60 chip, same 4 gigs of RAM, same reliability and usability, minus the silky smoothness of a flagship. And with the camera here, putting all specs aside because they tend to be misleading in this genre of phones, you get pictures that in all lighting scenarios are way too soft and look like they've been run through Lightroom with the noise reduction bottomed out. There are certainly better cameras at this price, or even cheaper, but uh, take a look for yourself. Honestly, this is more or less where the story of the Bison X10 Pro ends because as much as I could continue talking about daily performance and how the outdoor focus features Umidigi you put on here are kind of rough around the edges or the obvious downsides of such a massive phone, I think leaving things here is the best thing to do because in this niche category of rugged outdoor phones with massive batteries, this is one of the best cheap ones. But I personally am not going to ever use anything resembling this as a daily phone and for the majority of people not looking for an absolute tank of a phone, I think this gives us more entertainment value than anything. Thanks for watching.